In this video we're going to have a look at the template document and your particular document. I've just completed a document here which I'm ready to submit. So, uh, whoops, I'm, here's my document. Uh, so let's go through step by step. Okay, you're given a document with a title image, delete it, put your own image. You may want to put an image of your particular spreadsheet that you've done or something else that interests you. Um, give the document a heading, don't leave this stuff that uh, is given to you, uh, it's too ordinary. Okay, you know that uh, the way that the, um, the index works is that, oh I haven't got a back to um, the index here, here's one, uh, you can hop around the document and that should be the case with yours as well. Uh, you may want to refresh when you're finished, um, update the uh, table of contents and that should allow you to uh, let's go to the box and whisker and then let's come back to the table of contents. Okay, uh, so that's automatic. Uh, the um, submission, uh, I've forgotten this, pro oh, student declaration is uh, blank on the template. You need to fill yours out up here and down here. This is like a digital signature. Okay, let's keep on going. Uh, for everybody, this is what your teachers will use to mark your project. They will highlight, uh, maybe you've got a uh, top mark for this one, uh, and person that's marking that may be marking it in, now I can't see enough here, uh, highlighting, they, yep, and the person who's marking the top section may be marking in yellow. So uh, the way the mark would work is that uh, you would be getting four marks for this one and five marks for this one because it's in the top bracket. We obviously think you know your stuff for that. I'm going to go Control F Z, Control Z, and put that back to where it was. So you don't touch that. That is for teacher use only. Okay, uh, the note about attribution, you can wipe that. So you're going to go straight into the uh, project overview and um, now there is a sample spreadsheet and that sample spreadsheet looks like that blank totally blank with no extra sheets uh, just a simple blank Google document okay uh, you on the other hand are going to manipulate yours here's mine uh, I think it's got a couple of sheets, uh, some demo data, and uh, anyway, and you need to submit not only a Google Doc but a um, spreadsheet. All right, let's keep going. We come on down. So that overview, you can leave that till last and just give up um, uh, a bit of a summary. You can see what's written on mine here. Um, but I'm just saying that I copied this data and I manipulated it and my conclusions are in the last section. So if I were to click this, uh, I could come down and have a look at that conclusion. Here it is up here. It's fairly brief. Okay, we can go back. Uh, Alright, we need to... Uh, I should have clicked another link. Alright, so the overview is done. All right, uh, standard notation. Now, uh, you are, we're going to have a look at your notation, your graphs, and your data, your raw data. So standard notation, uh, raw data, and why haven't I got graphs in there? I'm not sure where that's gone. Uh, let's have a look what I've got here, standard notation. So I've used... Uh, I've talked about different ways to represent sample space. We've got that grid. We've got this tree diagram. Uh, this is another way we can calculate things. Um, my tables of raw data, in fact, I have copied that straight out of here. And Well, actually, I think I copied it from here. 
so I've got my table of raw data and that's actually my absolute raw data. Uh, let's go back here uh, and graphs right so uh, there needs to be a graphs uh, heading over here copy uh, I'm not sure why I left that out uh, but it's there now um, okay uh, now I'm saying that my graphs see my Google sheet for the graphs but I have included the uh, frequency column graph and polygon we can't call this a histogram because it's got gaps between the columns so we're going to call it a column graph but that uh, red line is a polygon going to the center of the top of each column so there I've got a graph but anyone looking at my spreadsheet is going to see nothing where's my spreadsheet where's my graphs on my spreadsheet Oh, this is a big problem. They were there, maybe. Uh, uh, yes, it's a big problem. They were there. Let's just have a look at this full screen. See whether. It, uh, oh, that's what happens. That's the raw paste. Here's my. And when you paste from Excel, which is Microsoft and very functional, into Google, you lose a lot of your content. So here's my. Um, uh, my. Um, conclusion with a frequency polygon and a cumulative frequency. Now the red knot line there is not actually a proper cumulative frequency polygon. We'll deal with that a bit later. Uh, but as long as you qualify that, you can still do it on your machine. I've done some explanations here about uh, how the various uh, numbers were calculated and that's what we're really examining you on. Okay, so we've got our raw data. We come down here now to statistical processes, and the course has got lots of them. So uh, we deal with, uh, uh, I mean, this is saying statistical, but we're going to deal with probability as well. So single event probability. Um, my uh, here's an example of from your textbook, and you can take a photo of your exercise book uh, and stick it in here. Now this looks like multiple event but in fact it's single event. So I've given my answers here. Uh, they're split over a page. By the way if you want to insert a page break uh, I think we go insert page well, we page break there we go and there's a shortcut there which I didn't look at. So that looks a bit clearer. Now I've written mine out but you would be better off uh, taking a photo of your exercise book and putting in an example here. Uh, now our dice have got two dice so they're multiple event. So I can talk about my own project for this one here. Uh, my my data sheet uh, does not is not appropriate for single event probability hence I took a question from my book okay uh, relative frequency I have not filled this out but we have got a relative frequency column in our table here and they're all calculated uh, let's just do some refreshing of this if I hit any cell and I hit delete oh no this one's fixed values it's the Microsoft one which now here if I push F9 this one will update but what we want you to do is take a copy of this for one particular set of numbers and paste it into your spreadsheet and there's a video on how to do that let's keep going uh, so um, that's my graphs uh, relative frequency I probably need to wrap it on a little bit more about that the data collection um, we actually used random numbers and then I have to talk about my data let's just have a look down here um, uh, there's some information here you'll notice that I've deleted all this um, there's my relative frequency uh, data collection I needed to talk about each one of those and for my data I've got answers for each one of them here yes or no and why okay uh, the next is create a stem and leaf 
Now, you could do an exercise from your book if you wish. I've chosen to do my data that I have on my sheet. My data is uh, twos, threes, fours. So there they are. There's the twos, threes, fours, uh, the nines. As soon as I get to 10, I'm in my second line. Here's my tens, 11s, and 12s. And that's the entirety of my data. Uh, the good thing about a stem and leaf, and this is what we want you to learn, is that uh, it allows you to do quartiles and medians. So I've highlighted where you should find the uh, median, the first quartile, and the third quartile. So we can get our means and medians from here. By the way, that's not a zero. That is a 10 because of this one over here. OK. Uh, I've also, because that doesn't, that's not a very good example of a stem and leaf, I've also grabbed a question out of the textbook. In fact, that's out of the work dances, and I've commented on that, that not only can we see uh, the comparisons, that one on the right, I think that's New Zealand, is got much uh, higher figures, uh, but I can also see the shape of the curve and whether it's skewed or whether it's symmetrical. Uh, now, uh, create a frequency and cumulative... Ah, I haven't changed that. If we come back here, it says create frequency graphs. So I should be changing this here. Create frequency. I should say a, create a frequency graph. If you've got a couple of sets of data, you can do a couple. That would be ideal create frequency graphs. All right. Um, I've uh, put a link in mind to the video that I used uh, that helped me go through this. And so uh, part of this is for you to accredit the sources that you've used. I can't imagine you getting through all this without going to Google half a dozen times at least. Um, there is a video here uh, which you can use to uh, step you through that. Grouped data. There is another 10 minute video which allows you to uh, create your own grouped data. Because my scores are only from uh, their twos, threes up to 12, there are not enough to put in groups. So I've created, I've used that video, and I've created a set of grouped data. Let's just have a look, see if we can see it on here. Um, demo data, grouped data. Here it is. If I uh, hit a square and delete, that data changes. I've got 80 scores here. and we're not, oh, I've actually got 82 scores on mine. Uh, in the video, you'll see 80. Um, and so we can, whoa, control Z. What did I do? I think I hit delete when I was in there. Uh, yep, I deleted that. And so all these were trying to divide by zero. OK. Uh, so that's group data. Now what I should do here is add a cumulative frequency column. Uh, and just in case you haven't seen this, the first cumulative frequency column is equal to that value. Enter. The next, oh, I've got to change the format of these. The next one is equal to this one plus um, this one enter and then I can copy these down you'll see that the format is percentage which is a problem so I have to go uh, format I need to highlight them all and whoops let's go back here format format number and I want to have that just as a very plain number down here okay so this is cumulative frequency, CF is the abbreviation. Uh, and I can make that a little smaller. Let's just make this a bit bigger so that we can see, my goodness, 75%. That's better. OK. Now, from here, I can work out medians and means. If I've got 82 scores, the median will be 41 and 42, between the 41st and 42nd score. I can see here that everything from the 31st score up to the 50th score is a um, 
it's it's in that class so it's got a, me, a class center of 50.5 so that's going to be my median likewise you can have your quartiles at uh, 21 and 61 you could do 20 and a half 60 and a half um, but round about there just explain what you're doing so and then you can actually do additional graphs for these uh, you could have instead of me having five classes you could have ten classes here uh, be a lot easier okay so really what you're doing in this project is you're showing off your knowledge of all the parts that we have studied in class in the text so we did grouped data uh, I haven't got the exercise number listed here that's strange um, but one of the exercises we have done it alright we did median and cumulative frequency in exercise 7e and f um, now as I say the cumulative frequency that I get from Google is wrong I had to manually well I had to draw that orange line on top of this and then if you do that you can bring your 75 across and down it's more accurate than just picking it out from the table where you get 4 this shows us that it's 4.2 really it's closer to 4.2 this is pretty well bang on 7 and here 10.1 okay uh, now mine how I have not gone through all that oh yes yeah, so, well I've copied this in because that was actually for my data so I copied it in, copied it in. if you've got time do this it's a lot of work um, now measures of central tendency and they are mean median and mode I suggest you make them distinct and talk about them each uh, and uh, talk about them in relation to your data now measures of spread uh, we've got uh, range, quartiles, deciles uh, you can see that I've got them written like this you need to make a fuss about them uh, we've also got interquartile range and standard, deviator, standard deviation I've forgotten to do my interquartile range uh, so um, I need to put that in I'm not going to do it now but I am going to um, say that it's I QR stands for interquartile range. Uh, right, I'll fill that out a little later. Okay. Um, and then we come down, we actually use, oh, this is a, a bit of in, a stuff about outliers. Now, outliers, if you have the time, talk a lot about outliers. If you're running short of time, that's probably one you can leave out. Box and whisker. Okay, I'm giving you one example here and uh, so that's the given sample uh, uh, this now my uh, graph up above uh, let's just bring it back up over here there it is um, it says 4.2 and 10.1 so I've actually scaled mine to 4.2 and 10.1 um, do what you have time for uh, I will just show you how to edit this so this is what is here is a just test case all right, uh, I'm going to double click. I'm going to make this full screen just so while I'm working. And I can actually make it bigger. I can zoom it into 200. And that way I can do this more accurately. Now let's suppose that your upper quartile is 9. You can get that right back on 9. Notice that it drags this whisker with you. Um, let's grab that whisker and put it out a little further maybe that whisker goes to 11 and then you can work out wherever your mean is now you can hit the arrow keys right and left uh, most people will probably have a mean at 7 now that's not going to go exactly there so I'm going to have to move it myself just get it a bit more accurate alright you got the idea and then you can save and close and your graph is now updated with a mean on 7 and an upper quartile on 9 okay uh, yes yeah, too hard to do on the spreadsheet the um, Microsoft one does it but the calculations for it are extremely difficult 
now we want to make a fuss about whether you can use technology or not if you leave college without being able to use a spreadsheet you're at a huge disadvantage so um, also when you're in your exam you can only use your calculator you obviously can't use a spreadsheet so um, we need to uh, demonstrate we need to really need to make a cheat sheet for when we are studying for our exams now what I've done is taken photos of my uh, calculator as I've gone through I think I've done six photos and six steps uh, I could be more thorough about all the intermediate steps but uh, that's enough to show that my answers are genuine now when I go through and I do the uh, mean I get 6.99 you can see it up here on the screen 6.99 if I come over here to the um, my data whoever's marking this is going to check it with your data I can see straight away that my total number of scores is 699 when I divide that by 100 because I've got 100 scores I'm going to get 6.99 uh, if I look at the oh, why can't I if I look at the standard deviation 3.2542 the computer does that really oh it's copied in directly um, uh, there is a formula to do that on the computer but if you copy your data um, it will be hard coded uh, let's go have a look at how that's justified whoops I've lost it um, how that's justified here uh, when I did my uh, standard deviation 3.25421 so it should equal exactly up to lots of decimal places what your spreadsheet has got otherwise you're pushing the wrong buttons here so you need to prove to us that you know which buttons to push okay for the spreadsheet I ended up having to go to Google half a dozen times to figure things out so that's videos that I watched um, a couple of help files um, I just had to look up how to do a therefore symbol and I actually had to draw the dots in the box so I sh please put down some of that stuff so that you know how to sort out problems uh, yeah I had to go look up how to do a page break that's why I could do it at the beginning of this video um, you may want to take a screenshot of the files I actually have my file sitting in here uh, and I can't see my file sizes but they are there. They're certainly much smaller than a. Um, you can see that a Microsoft file is much bigger. All these are actually just shortcuts. Everything for Google is just a link because it all sits up on the web and you can't see exactly what uh, its file size is. Uh, let's keep going back here. All right. So um, we want to see a photo of your calculator. Uh, yeah. If that's a problem, talk to your teacher. Uh, you can copy and pinch stuff from our resources. So there are some resources which allow you, which already have photos in there. Okay, the last part is the justification of your particular problem. Now, most of you are going to do dice, um, and so that's my spreadsheet. I'm showing off my spreadsheet here. Um, discuss your problem uh, in the context of the course theory now uh, I did have some difficulties I've written those down here uh, so I'm explaining the difficulties oh, a conclusion paragraph here's my paragraph pretty short um, about what I was doing uh, how valid are my results I, I did uh, yeah how valid um, what did you learn and I've detailed Oh, I haven't got anything under what I've learned but I learnt a, an awful lot actually because I haven't used Google Sheets before I've only used uh, Microsoft so uh, if I want to make that uh, I need to go here and then I go uh, blah 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 make a few points there okay now all this suggested projects stuff that is all you can delete all that so you're at the end you are done and you can turn this in now I suggest you uh, 
turn this in quite a few times so your teacher can see versions and then you draw it back and update it as you continue working on it. That's it. Thank you for paying attention this long.